Palantir is down 7% on Friday. Ooh, end of the world, right? Palantir is down 7% on Friday. It's all over. Now, why exactly is Palantir down on Friday and what has been happening with the company and with the stock more recently? Well, on Friday, it got hit by a, let's say, bearish note. Bearish note, can we say this? Yeah, I think we can say bearish note. Now, the analyst has been saying a lot of stuff about Palantir in the last couple of months and also all the way back in 2022. So let's start from the first month of the year. Don't pull the trigger, says Brian White about Palantir stock. In March, Palantir dips after Mones cuts rating to sell on valuation. April 26, Palantir stock has AI upside, but the valuation is excessive. Back in 2022, Palantir's recent strength unsustainable, says the same analyst. So what was the reason for the sudden cut in the rating and the $20 price target? By the way, $20 price target, still not that bad. So the results from enterprise software companies that reported recently were largely downbeat. And with the preeminent companies in the space such as Salesforce, Workday and others issuing disappointing outlooks, the supposed benefit from generative artificial intelligence for enterprise software has shown to be a revenue illusion this year. Additionally, these challenges likely have more room to run, as evidenced by MongoDB cutting its fiscal 2025 guidance and Oracle issuing an uninspiring outlook for the first quarter. Now, remember that Palantir can continue to grow, does not have to buy GPUs by NVIDIA, does not have to get hit with regards to margins, whereas a lot of other companies do have to do so in order for their offerings to be, well, at the top. What else? Well, something we've been discussing more recently. A lot of companies that are spending a lot of money are probably going to notice that the ROI is suddenly not as high as previously thought. And then what happens? Well, then what happens? Then you're going to look for solutions that actually work, not PowerPoint presentations, not chatbots that are cute, but don't really deliver the goods. No, you're going to go and look for solutions, solutions that, <laughs> surprise, surprise, a company like Palantir offers. You might not have considered them at first, but eventually, if you want to compete in your industry, if you want to grow, not spend that much money compared to what you've been spending and have a good return on investment, then you might consider a company like Palantir. So what I've been saying, a lot of people have been saying the same thing, that yeah, maybe at first Palantir might not have been looked at as a huge AI winner or one of these companies that might compete with all the other software giants. Okay, cool. Maybe at first there was a spending spree, everybody flocks to the same group of companies and see if that solution works. Eventually, when you see that your growth suddenly is not at the levels that you thought it would be, when suddenly you see that your ROI is not at the level you thought it would be, then you're going to look at your competitor, maybe your competitor is already using Palantir, and suddenly they are doing much better, and you're like, huh, maybe it's time for me to go and look at that company. Also, remember, we've talked about the government side of Palantir. I think the government side of Palantir is being overlooked each and every time we speak about it. The company itself, management said, it's going to reaccelerate in 2024. We're going to look at some announcements as well in this video. Everybody's focused on the sexy, fancy, schmancy commercial side of the business, which of course is growing much faster. But don't forget the other huge part of Palantir's business. So, 7% drop on Friday? Okay, so what? Company still up, what, 30-40% year to date, something like that? We're going to have to look at that in just a second. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe, if you have not, we really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and end up in comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So a quick recap, year to date, stock is still up 38.8%, year over year, 62.88%. As a fourth PE, of course, not that cheap, 70.4 times, but of course, looking at the PE right now for Palantir, to me, doesn't make that much sense. You might disagree, that's completely fine. Has a market cap of $53.16 billion. Now, 
if we look at Palantir, of course, Palantir as a business is becoming more and more profitable with regards to free cash flow, with regards to gross profit and net income as well. SBC as a percentage of revenue continues to drop down now at 20.8%. If you look at what some analysts are expecting, five-year growth rate with regards to EPS, closer to 24%, which to me is quite good. If you look at revenues, Kager, three-year Kager here, yes, it has been dropping. It's now at 24 0.67%, but of course, if we look at what the analysts are expecting in the coming fiscal year, it's closer to 20%. Currently, of course, if the business does continue to show us reacceleration in government and in commercial, I expect these estimates to go back up because yes, it's true that only growing 20% is not enough to justify the current market cap, the current valuation of this company. And for those that are still interested in that, the average analyst price target sits at $21.34, representing 10% upside from the price we're at today. Moving on to some other news here, this was a positive analyst update, let's say, with regards to Palantir, I think a week or two ago, probably two weeks. So Palantir initiated with buy at Argus amid dramatically improving profitability. The analyst noted that while Palantir has long served the needs of the US defense and intelligence community, the company has expanded into the commercial sector with data management and analytics platform capable of providing solutions to complex business problems. The analyst added that Palantir's government business generated 55% of revenue in 2023, while the remaining 45% from its commercial segments, of which 38% was generated outside the United States. While Argus expects the government business segment to continue to grow, the commercial business mainly in the United States looks to be the company's future growth driver. So it has a buy rating and a $29 price target. The analyst noted that like several enterprise software companies, Palantir depends on new AI powered applications to expand its business. Now again, they don't really care what model comes out. The model companies are going to battle it out between them. With Palantir, you can choose whatever you want. So. It's not really a big issue. The more competitors, the better it will be, the more options. Argus long-term rating for Palantir is also buy. Palantir shares are highly volatile and priced at a premium, but Argus also sees Palantir as a highly differentiated software company. The analyst said that the company has been dramatically improving its profitability and cash flow over the past year. Argus is establishing a 2024 non-GAAP EPS estimate of 33 cents and a 2024 forecast of 40 cents for Palantir. Then moving on to the announcements. So first up we have from a space company, Star Lab Space announces strategic partnership with Palantir Technology. So the US-led global joint venture across Voyager Space, Airbus, Mitsubishi Corporation and MDA Space today announced Palantir Technology as a strategic partner. Palantir will become the exclusive supplier of enterprise-wide software data management solutions for the Star Lab commercial space station. Would be great if maybe Rocket Lab could partner up with Palantir as well. Palantir Advanced AI Technologies will revolutionize how space stations are managed and operated. Together, we are poised to advance the frontier of space research and ensure we remain resilient, effective, and adaptive as we forge into this new era of commercial space exploration. As for a comment from Alex Karp, Starlab is a commercial leader working to solve some of the most complex engineering and operational challenges in the exploration of space. We could not be more enthusiastic about our partnership as we work to extend our competitive edge through the provision of decisive and real-time intelligence around the world and in space. Moving on, the Advanced Research Project Agency for Health partners with Palantir to accelerate health outcomes by leveraging AI and machine learning and data software tooling. So Palantir's AIP and Foundry software will help the agency drive key workflows by providing a data strategy and infrastructure that will underpin business operations and enable continuous improvement. The contract is worth $19 million over two years. More contract news, this time from the government side, Palantir wins $480 million defense contract for AI system prototype. Palantir USG was awarded 480 million firm fixed price contract for the Maven Smart System prototype. One bid was solicited via the internet with one received. Work location and funding will be determined with each order with an estimated completion date of May 28, 2029. The company has been part of the department's AI surveillance and targeting system called Project Maven 
which aims to create an AI tool to process imagery and full motion video from drones and automatically detect potential targets. Then a good find by GoCarp on X, Palantir partnership with Morrison Group and they've got $5.5 million from the FAA. Total contract is about $11 million. Again, the Palantir community can find things at the deep end of the internet. Moving on to another one, as the famous composer DJ Khaled would say. Contract for June 14, 2024, with regards to the Air Force. So again, Palantir USG has been awarded a $21,669,638 firm fixed price modification to previously awarded contract number 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 for data as a service platform for headquarters Air Force. The work is expected to be completed by October 15 of this year. So as you can see, don't sleep on the government side of Palantir. Now moving on to the stock, well, it actually played out quite well. We've got that breakout that happened in the last two weeks. This week we did end higher than the way we started, but it is, I believe, it's called an inverted hammer. Now for those chart specialists, what happens when you have an inverted green hammer, not at a bottom, but maybe closer to the top? don't think it's extremely bullish, but right now we're also, with regards to RSI, we're not overbought or seeing some negative momentum either. It's been four weeks of green candle on the weekly. So if you're a chart specialist, do let me know down in the comment section below. The 20-day moving average is now extremely close to $20, the 50-day one at 22.41, and the 20-day one, $22.85. So overall, that's about it. That's why Palantir dropped 7% today. That's what has been happening with Palantir in the last couple of weeks. That's how the stock in the company is looking like right now. So we've got major overview. If you like this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hit all the buttons and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.